Are you ready to turn trash into treasure? Today we're upcycling junk and dump finds into stunning garden and patio decor. From birdhouses to old pitchforks, I'm going to show you how I transformed these discarded items into beautiful and functional pieces for your outdoor space. So grab your gloves, let's get upcycling. I'm going to use up a whole bunch of scrap stuff that I've had in my shed forever. An old drawer, a teapot with a missing lid, and a door handle. I'm going to take the handle off the drawer that was there already and I'm going to paint the drawer with some of my crackle paint using the Elmer's glue. I'm going to spread that glue all over that drawer and then we're going to paint some chalk paint on top of it and as it dries you're going to see some wonderful cracks show up all throughout the paint. Once it's completely dried I had some stain and I'm going to put the stain over top of the crackle paint. It's just going to age it and give it more of a vintage look. I'm replacing the knob that was on there with this knob so we have a place to hang the drawer when it's all finished. I'm gonna tape off the inside of that teapot. I've taken it outside and I'm spraying it with this lovely spray paint. Now the teapot's completely dry. I'm gonna take that tape out from the inside and we're gonna attach it to the top of that drawer. I'm using this old door pull and I'm going to screw it into the top of the drawer attaching the teapot. I found this plaque at the dollar store and it's had a piece of paper decoupaged on it. I'm going to rip off that decoupage and get it cleaned down right to the wood and we're going to turn it into a sign. And to make the sign, we're going to use the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I designed these graphics, printed it off on my laser jet printer, made sure to reverse the text. I've painted that little plaque with a couple coats of my homemade chalk paint. I sanded it distressed it and then put the graphics on and now it's been 24 hours I dampened the paper rubbed it off and it's all set I wanted to age that teapot a little bit so I took some 80 grit sandpaper and just went around the edges so it looked a little bit more old and vintage had this piece of chain that I'm going to loop onto the top this spindle that was cut in half is going to go on the bottom hang tight with me this is super cute this is what I turned it into a fun little birdhouse. The teapot acts as a little house for the birds to go in, home tweet home, the little spindle they can perch on. How cute is that? This project, I had this old rusty toolbox in my shed forever, full of little bits and pieces. I cleaned it out because I knew what I wanted to use it for. I went to the hardware store, got some small nuts and bolts because I'm going to attach some brackets onto this toolbox. I drilled two holes in each side to attach the brackets and then we're gonna use the nuts and the bolts to attach it. I also put two holes in the bottom of the toolbox in case it ever gets any water or anything in it because I'm gonna put this outside so the water can drain out. I'm gonna clean it up really well, take the sticker off that was on it, put a couple holes in the back so we can attach it to my shed. I've put a block of wood on my shed because we want to be able to open up the door of that toolbox when it's mounted and there's enough room at the back. And this is what I created with two brackets. I attached the toolbox and now I have a catch all toolbox on the outside of my shed for all of my gardening tools. This poor little vase has been in my shed for probably since last Halloween. I painted it orange, I'm not liking it right now. I had this cement color oops paint that I found at Home Depot. I turned it into some sand paint and I'm gonna paint over that orange paint with this gray sand paint and it almost gives it a cement look. So I've turned this orange little pot into this beautiful cement looking planter for my patio. This is adorable. It was a little bit rusty, so I cleaned it all off, gave it a little bit of a sand, and now I'm painting it with my homemade chalk paint. Once it's completely dry, we're gonna put some graphics on with the Mod Podge Reverse Graphic Transfer Method. I love this graphic, Farm Life, and I think it's really fitting for this shovel. I'm gonna cut it in half because there's that little bit of the dip in the shovel, and I want the graphics to be able to form around it. Applied the Mod Podge, put it where I wanted it, let it sit for 24 hours, and then we're gonna rub off the paper. Now a little tip when you're doing projects like this, if you don't want the rust to leach through again, you can always use a spray primer first and then the chalk paint on top of it. I didn't use the primer because I'm okay if the rust does leach through. I sealed it up really well with some engine enamel because it's gonna be out in the elements, and I think this is perfect to put out in the garden at the farm. 
You can just stick the end of the shovel into a bucket full of flowers and it's adorable. For this next project, all I used was an old colander that I found at the thrift store, a piece of a spindle, and a wooden ring. I'm going to drill four holes in the colander evenly across the top of it, and then we're gonna use some twine and measure it out to the length that we need to where we wanna hang it. Once it's all measured out, we're going to attach it to that wooden ring and tie it to the colander. I wanted to give it a little bit of character, so I drilled a hole through that spindle, had a piece of wire, and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the colander. So I've taken a colander and a spindle and a little bit of twine, and I've made it into a really adorable plant hanger that you can put on your porch, and the little dangly spindle on the bottom finishes it off completely. Another thing that I always save from the scrap metal bin are ends of rakes. They turn into really great projects to make into coat hangers or to hang jewelry from. And this one I'm gonna to put together with a bunch of scrap wood. I had this piece of wood, I think it came off an old antique table. I sealed it up with some penetrating oil and I had this old chippy piece of baseboard that I'm going to add onto the bottom. I sealed it up with some matte polyacrylic sealer so the paint wouldn't chip off anymore. Put on some Gorilla Glue and I'm going to nail it onto the bottom of that piece of wood. Now I have no idea where this little bracket came from or what it was off of, but my rake fit perfect into it to hang. So I'm gonna screw it into that piece of wood and then we're gonna put the rake into it and it'll hold it in place. And this was what I was able to create with a bunch of junk, an old rake, a piece off of a table, an old piece of baseboard, and it's a beautiful piece to hang in an entranceway to keep your keys, or you can keep it in the kitchen and hang some utensils on it. It's gorgeous. Let's make a sign for the garden with a scrap piece of pine. I wanna make it look old and vintage, so I'm taking a hammer, really dinging it all around the edges and anywhere where it would have naturally aged. Then I'm taking some stain and I'm gonna stain that board completely. It's gonna soak into all those little nooks and crannies that we created with the hammer. I just love being able to take a new piece of wood and make it look old and vintage and rustic. Next, we're going to put on a coat of black homemade chalk paint. All these steps might seem like a lot of work, but in the end, it's taking a plain piece of wood and making it look more authentic and making it look better when it's turned into a sign. We're now going to do a crackle paint technique on this. I'm using my Elmer School Glue and I'm pouring a generous amount on top of that paint after it's dried. We're going to spread that glue all over that piece of wood. And then once we have the glue spread out, we're going to let it sit for about a minute. We want it to start to get a little bit tacky. It's all ready now. We're gonna take our homemade chalk paint and in long strokes from one end to the other, we're going to paint on top of that glue while it is still tacky. And you'll see as that paint dries, it's gonna create a crackle finish that looks fantastic and authentic and old. It's completely dry now. I'm gonna sand around the edges and we're ready to turn this into a sign. I've printed my graphic off on regular computer paper, sizing it to my project, and then we're going to apply it onto that wood with some Mod Podge. This process will also work with an inkjet printer. I have lots of tutorials comparing the inkjet against the laser jet on my YouTube channel. You can check that out if you want. You're gonna put a light amount of that Mod Podge over the graphic. This product that I'm using is exactly like Mod Podge. I couldn't find Mod Podge when I was looking for it and this works just as well. I bought this one at Michael's from Deco Art. You have to make sure when you're doing this technique that you reverse your text. If you don't, when you make your sign, your letters will be backwards. It's 24 hours later. I let it dry completely and now I've got a rag with a little bit of water on it and I'm dampening the paper so the graphics just start to show through. And then I'm using my fingers and we're rubbing away all of that paper. And as we do that, the graphics are going to stay on our sign. The paper is going to rub off and it's that easy to make a sign with Mod Podge. I'm gonna hang this out in my garden, so I need something to hang it from. I'm drilling a couple holes in the top and I'm gonna put through some twine, tie it nice and tightly, and then we're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. This is an outdoor formula because it's going to be out in the elements and I want my sign to last for a long time. If you're making signs and they're going to be inside, you can buy the water-based polyacrylic sealer for indoors and it works perfect. 
So that's how easy it is to create your own signs with a little bit of Mod Podge, computer paper, and a piece of wood. What do you think? This might be one of my favorite signs that I've ever made. I made this sign in one of my very first videos when I first started my YouTube channel, and I just love it, and I know some of you probably haven't seen it, so I wanted to share it. This is a piece of salvaged wood from a table. It's an actual table leg, and I'm gonna decoupage a beautiful floral napkin onto it. A little trick when you're decoupaging and you're putting more than one napkin on, I always like to rip the end that you're gonna match the next napkin up with, and it just helps it blend in better. When I do projects like this, it always makes me feel better for not getting rid of all those bits and pieces that I save. The table legs, the spindles, the old rusty bits and pieces because one day I always put together something that's absolutely beautiful just from junk. Once it was all dry, I took it outside and I sanded all around the edges and got rid of all that leftover napkin and it blended it in beautifully. And now we're gonna seal it up with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer. And we're gonna use the same technique again, the reverse technique. I use this, like I said before, for almost everything. It's so affordable and easy to do. Uh, it sometimes takes a little bit of practice to get the feel of rubbing off the paper, but once you get the hang of it, it works fantastic. You don't have the cost of the vinyl if you're using a Cricut, and with a stencil, you're limited to what signs you can make unless you buy all kinds of stencils. With this, you just download your graphic, print it, and make a sign. I wanna hang my sign to the table leg. I've got these fence staples, you can find them at the hardware store, and this old chain, and I'm gonna attach the two together. And the sign is all ready for the paper to be rubbed off. And we're gonna seal it up with our polyacrylic sealer. I had two of these table legs. I made a vintage garden and the fresh flowers and I absolutely adore them. That floral napkin looked perfect on the legs and the signs finished them off. I've got a lot of signs that I'm showing you today because there's so many ideas of stuff that you can make for your outdoor decor or your garden. This one is made on a piece of pallet wood and I'm gonna make a flower market sign. I've sized the graphics to fit on this piece of pallet wood and we're ready to use a Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. A free piece of pallet wood made beautiful. This is a fun one. I did this one recently with pallet wood and cling wrap, and it's just a painting technique that's really great to do with kids and lots of fun. Get out all of your acrylic paint, all the different colors, and we're gonna mix and match. And we're just gonna drop paint here and there on the board, doesn't matter, this is just for fun, and it doesn't matter if it's messy or if you get too much in one place and not enough in another, it'll all turn out perfect. And then you're gonna get a piece of saran wrap or cling wrap and lay it right into that paint. And this is where it's lots of fun with kids. Just let them use their fingers and blend all of that paint in together. And just keep blending until you get the color that you like. And when you're blending two or three colors together, you're making other colors. It's just so much fun. And these are beach and pool theme. I'm doing a beach sign and I'm doing a hello summer sign. Love the way that they turned out. The first 
first project that I'm going to work on is this pitchfork. I actually got this pitchfork quite a while ago from the dump. Dug it out, brought it home, and I painted it back then with some chalk paint and it started to weather a little bit. So I'm going to refresh it with some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm going to put a really pretty graphic on it. Okay, my chalk paint has completely dried and now I'm going to put this welcome graphic on it. If you've been following my channel, you know I love my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer to put on my graphics and that's what I'm going to use for this project. I've printed off this graphic on my LaserJet printer. Make sure you reverse your text if you want to do a project like this just on regular computer paper. And all the graphics that I'm using today in all three of my projects are available in my Etsy store. I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat and I'm just going to put a light coat over the whole graphic. Make sure you're covering the whole piece of paper and then I'm going to flip it over and center it where I want it on my pitchfork and then rub any wrinkles or bubbles out so it's nice and smooth. I have quite a few tutorials on my um, channel that go really into depth into this method. If you want to learn how to do it, um, I'll put a link down below in the description. So you can go back and you can watch those and I'll show you a more thorough step-by-step -step tutorial. Now my graphic has completely dried. I've let it sit overnight and I'm just taking a damp rag and I'm just wetting that paper just so you can start to see those graphics through. And then I'm going to rub off the paper and you're left with a really pretty graphic. I've sealed it up with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer and look how cute this is. These look so cute, propped up on your porch, some flowers around them for a farmhouse feel. Old milk can that I have had on my porch for quite a while, the paint has faded on it, so I'm gonna refresh it. I'm gonna put on a coat of my homemade black chalk paint over the entire milk can. And I'm gonna put a customized graphic on this of our last name and the year that we were established. I'm gonna make my graphic the size of a piece of paper. So I'm putting this on just to, as a guide so I can tape off the area that I want to paint with some white chalk paint. And if you wanna do a project like this, make sure you use some good painter's tape so the paint doesn't bleed through when you paint it on. So now that I have all the tape on, I'm gonna peel that piece of paper away and I have a perfect square, the same size as a piece of paper. And I'm just gonna take my white chalk paint and I'm gonna paint in between that square and it'll probably take two or three coats to get it um, covered really well. If you're interested in me doing one of these custom graphics for you with your last name and a year on them, I do have it listed in my Etsy store so you can head over there and check it out and I can custom make you one. Now this is completely dried and I'm just going to peel away that painter's tape and I'm left with a perfect square. And this is the graphic that I'm going to use on my milk can and I think it's the perfect graphic at a front door. And again, I've put this in my word program, sized it to the size that I want it, printed it off on my laser jet printer on regular computer paper, and I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat, and I'm going to put it right in that painted square, and then I'm gonna flip it over after I've got all the Mod Podge on, get all the wrinkles and bubbles out of it, and then I'm gonna let it sit overnight and dry really well before I rub off the paper and the graphics will be left on my milk can. Okay, everything is completely dried. I'm taking a rag, just dampening it till you can start to see the graphics through and then rubbing off all of that paper. Now I wanted to show you sometimes not all the graphics turn out perfect. I was rubbing this and a little piece of the G kind of um, rubbed away. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to add a little bit of Mod Podge right on that black ink of where it rubbed off and then press it down exactly where it goes on that graphic and line it up really well. And then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry really thoroughly and it should fix itself and um, have that black ink transfer back onto that graphic on my milk can. I just wanted to show you that not every graphic that I do turns out perfect and it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. And even with me doing these graphics for a lot of years, I still have some that don't turn out perfect. But I love the way that this one turned out. It just kind of gives it that farmhouse feel and kind of rustic look. I'm gonna seal this milk can with some polyacrylic sealer outdoor. 
You wanna make sure if this is gonna be outside in the elements, you're using an outdoor formula to make sure that it's sealed really well. I'm so glad I finally got around to kind of sprucing this milk can up. It's been sitting at my front door and it's kind of looked dingy and it's one of those projects that I never really got around to doing, but I love it now and I can't wait to get it at my front door. Love the graphic also. And if you're interested in me making a personalized graphic for you to do a project like this, make sure you head over to my Etsy store and check it out. The third project is a face off of an old antique dresser. I couldn't get the handles off of it, so I thought I would just leave it and then I would use the other side to make into a farmhouse welcome sign for my front door. So I flipped it over and I'm gonna paint the back of that dresser door with some black chalk paint and that's going to be the front of my sign. I love my homemade chalk paint recipe, works fabulous. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can go and check out that recipe and mix some up for yourself. Now I'm gonna use some Vaseline along the edges of this sign so I can make it look chippy and vintage and I'm just putting some on my fingertip and I'm just putting it anywhere on the sign where it would have some natural wear all around the edges and on the top and on the bottom. And then I put on a coat of some brown chalk paint, gonna put on some more Vaseline on top of that brown chalk paint, just in random little spots around the edges. And then anywhere you've put the Vaseline, the paint will not adhere to it and it'll show the color underneath of it. And now I'm gonna put a coat of my homemade white chalk paint, and then I'm gonna put another coat of my white homemade chalk paint, and then I'm gonna take it outside, give it a really good sanding with a coarse sandpaper, and you'll see all the chippiness that that Vaseline leaves um, and shows all those different colors through the edge of the wood and gives it a real rustic, really vintage look. Now we're ready to put the graphics on. Again, the Mod Podge Reverse Graphic Transfer. I love it. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. Welcome to our home. I have put the graphic into my Word program and I have sized it to fit my board and I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat. If you've bought my graphics or if you have made your own graphics and you're not really sure how to reverse or how to size within your Word program, I have a full tutorial on how to do that. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can go and watch it and it'll help you out. This is set overnight. I'm just taking a damp rag. I'm just dampening it just so you can start to see the graphics show through. You wanna be really careful because if you put too much water on this, it will take the graphic away um, and you'll rub it off as you're working away on it. So you just, it kind of takes practice to see how much water you'll actually need to take off the paper. And once you get that technique down, you're golden. And this type of sign, you can put a hanger on the back and hang it on your door, or you can just prop it up beside your door and it looks fantastic too. And now I'm just gonna put a coat of my polyacrylic sealer in an outdoor formula and seal it up really well. And our welcome to our home sign is all finished and I love the way that it turned out and I love it even more that I was able to upcycle an old front of a dresser drawer that was in the landfill and make it into something that was crappy and make it pretty.
found these fabulous candle lanterns in the dump. They were dirty, they were really sun bleached, but they were still in really good shape and I knew I could perk them up and make them beautiful again. I'm gonna take the handle off the one lantern. It just has a jump ring and I can just squeeze it apart and take it off. And I'm gonna put some masking tape around that metal piece cause I don't want it to get any spray paint on it. I'm taking it outside and I'm just gonna give it a light coat of white spray paint. I wanna give it that sun bleached white color. Obviously somebody didn't see the potential that these lanterns still had because they turned out beautiful just with a real light coat of spray paint and brought it back to life for free. The glass votive holder on the inside of the one lantern was still there, was not broken. I cleaned it up and put in a little tea light and the other lantern, back in one of my older videos, I made some candles with a tuna tin can, and that's one of those, and it fit in there perfect. And look how gorgeous these are. Sun bleached, kind of white look, much better than the before, and they're ready to put out on my patio. Second project is this old lantern that I found in the scrap metal bin. It's really rusty, but it has so much character and I wanna preserve that rust. I don't wanna paint it. So I'm taking my engine enamel and I'm gonna give it a really good coat and seal in all that gorgeous rust. I love using the engine enamel for this type of a project. It seals it up really well so you can put it out in the elements and you can find it at a automotive store or you can also find it on Amazon. And I'll put the link down below in the description so you can check that out. The engine enamel that I bought has a bit of a gloss finish and it just made that rust pop. I love it. In one of my previous videos, I did some tin can upcycles and I made this tin can. I loved it and wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I know what to do with it today. I made a homemade napkin and decoupaged it on top of this tin can and it fit in this lantern perfect. I added an ivy and it is going to look gorgeous on my front porch. I've taken this rusty, dull looking lantern and made it into a beautiful piece of outdoor home decor. And I think the choice to save that rust color was the perfect one. I found this old birdhouse and it has definitely seen better days. The paint that was on it has completely uh, disintegrated on it and some of the nails were popped out and it just needed some TLC, but it was still in good enough shape that I'm going to be able to fix it up. Just taking my hammer and just pushing in any of those nails that had started to pop out and then I'm gonna give it a really good sanding with an 80 grit sandpaper so it'll be ready to paint. I am loving this yellow paint. I love picking up these little testers too. It's just the right amount of paint for a couple projects. And I'm also loving this paintbrush from Zebra, the Palm Pro. It works fantastic to get in all those little nooks and crannies on your small projects. I love all of their paintbrushes and they have different types for different projects. I'll put the link down below in the description and you can head over to their website and check them out because it is a must for paintbrushes. I thought the blue was gonna really complement the yellow. So I'm going to do a salt painting technique on the roof to give it a rustic kind of chippy look. I'm going to paint on the paint. This is just a regular latex paint, a sample that I bought at Home Depot, and I'm just painting it all over the roof. And then once I have that done, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle on pickling salt. You can use any type of salt, but the pickling salt, I like the texture that it gives and the chippiness, it's just a nice coarse salt. And just sprinkle it right into that wet paint. Once everything's all dry, I'm taking it outside because it is messy and I'm sanding it down with my 80 grit sandpaper. I think it turned out fantastic. I love the chippy feel and I'm gonna add some embellishments. I found this old door pole and this dresser drawer pole and I'm gonna add them onto the birdhouse just as some focal points.
and that looks 100% better than that birdhouse that I found in the dump at the wood pile. I was able to upcycle it and make it pretty again, and it's ready for some renters. Now, this is a whole bunch of things that I found put together. This wire basket and this wooden trivet. I'm not sure what it was off of or where it was from. It's really sturdy and beautiful. I knew I wanted to use that in this project and an old spindle off a table. I'm going to give the wire basket and the trivet a coat of black spray paint. I find sometimes when I find things, I just tuck them away and it takes a while for me to get inspired and figure out what I wanna do with them. And this is one of these projects. I had all three of these things tucked away and it just all of a sudden came to me and I put it together. I drilled a hole down the middle of the trivet and I'm doing a little test hole in the bottom of the spindle and I'm gonna screw those two pieces together. I'm using these staple nails to put the basket on top of the spindle. It was a little tricky to get that hammer in and out of there, but I made it work and I got it on there nice and sturdy. And I've created a beautiful planter with just junk, the wire basket, the spindle and that trivet on the bottom and it all pulled together beautifully. So that's why sometimes I can create these wonderful projects because I don't throw anything out because you never know when you're going to need it. This project we're going to upcycle this glass coffee jar and a solar light from the dollar store. I want to paint the glass jar and the first step that I like to do when painting glass is to give it a light spray of primer and then I had some of this accent stone spray paint. I wanted to give it a little bit of texture and it works fantastic for that. I'm going to take the stake out of the bottom of the solar light, fill up that glass jar with some gravel from my driveway, get out my E6000 and put a little bit around the rim of that glass jar and just set the solar light into it. The weight of the gravel in the glass jar keeps it from tipping over and I added some twine around the neck of it for embellishment and once the sun goes down the solar light will light up and it will look beautiful.